Hey folks, it's Ed with Slow Car Fix, and tonight I'm gonna to pull the body off the frame on my 55 Chevy project. Okay, so before we get started, um, I talked about in my last video about possibly getting a rotisserie and putting this car on a rotisserie. I'm not gonna do that. I think the only spots that I need to access, because I have the one piece floor, the only spots that I need to access are under the trunk area, the section between where I've replaced the rear of the car and the one piece floor. So I don't really need to spin it. Um, the other thing is I need to access the wheel wells and the inside of the new quarter panels so I can you know, paint in there and seal it all up and everything. Um, I'm going to remove the body from the chassis it's sort of an interesting way I'm going to do it. It's maybe a little different than most because I have a different setup than most. I don't have a two post lift. Uh, I have a scissor lift. So I have an idea. I think it's going to work. Uh, it shouldn't be too precarious, but probably a little. Okay, here we are. Uh, I have my gantry in the front. So I'm going to pick the car from the front of the firewall with the gantry. And at the back, right in roughly the same spot where people mount rotisseries, I have these jack stands. So they're right on that rear brace. So what I'm going to do very carefully is I'm going to undo all the body mounts because they're all torqued right now. I'm going to undo all the body mounts, uh, gather the hardware, and then support the I'll support the front of the car with the gantry and the back with the, the, uh, those stands. And then I'm going to lower my scissor lift with the chassis, roll the chassis out, and then I'll pick the scissor lift back up and pick the body of the car up with the scissor lift from the braces in the floor. And that still gives me access to all the places that I want to get to. Gives me the chassis out from under the car. Um, so I think that should work. The one thing that I'm doing that's, well, this is all unconventional, but the one thing that I'm doing that's sort of unconventional is I'm not removing the steering column at this point. I'm just gonna take the steering box off the frame. Uh, I've already had this off when I put the floor in, because I tilted the whole car up and slid the floor in. So I'm gonna undo the steering box from the frame, um, remove that knuckle there, that uh, steering knuckle, whatever it's called, from the uh, steering box. I'm just gonna kind of spin that out of the way and that way that won't be connected. Everything else is disconnected from the car other than the body mount. Every body mount is in and torqued. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to pick, I believe when I picked it before, I used this strap, which is sort of okay. And I picked from these holes on each side on that mount. So I think that's what I'll do again. Um, it worked before when I picked the front up to slide the floor in. So it should support the car. I'm not gonna open the doors on the car until the floor is uh, supported again with the uh, scissor lift. I may have to move, my scissor lift is a little off center. It's a little off to the passenger side. So I may take this opportunity while the car is suspended and roll the scissor lift out of the way and put it back sort of more straight, more square. Uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how precarious this lift looks before I start doing that. If you haven't already, check out my other videos on this project. There's like, I don't know, 30 or something videos from starting from a few years ago uh, when I looked a little different and the shop looked a little different and the car looked a little different and it had four doors, not two. So um, also uh, consider subscribing. It helps me, helps grow the channel, helps support the slow car community and, uh, and I appreciate it. If you stick with me till the end of the video, I bought some new parts for this car and I'd like to show you. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna take the steering box out of the way. It shouldn't be that hard because it's already been off and I think there's only one nut holding it on, so.
Before I get too carried away, <clears throat> I'm gonna support the front of the car. The back's already supported, the weight's on it. I let the scissor lift down. The scissor lift isn't fully extended. I didn't go all the way up because I need to have the room to be able to grab the body once the chassis is out. So I left it down as low as those stands would go, which I think is about the right height for the chassis, the distance that the chassis is. So, because I need to, the body to stay in its spot, but I need the scissor lift to have enough travel to come back and pick up the body. If I don't, then it, it can't go anywhere. It can't, I can't lower it back down. Okay, so I think this should be fine. Um, I don't really like that strap that much. It's, it's okay, it's an older strap. It's a, it's a, I think it's a 2,000 pounds rating on it. It was one that I carried with my car trailer for tying down cars. Um, so it's locked in place. It, it's like I'm not lifting up and down with it. I'm just going to hold the weight. So it just has to hold the weight. It should be more than capable of doing that. Um, yeah, I guess I got to take the uh, undo the body mounts. So for those of you that don't know, that's what a body mount looks like. Um, this is my new one piece floor attached to the frame. Uh, so there's a whack of these things. There's some up there. There's some back there. There's some in the uh, over the wheel well area. Uh, there's some on the inside. Uh, you can see them across on the other side. So I have to take all those off, put them in a box, save them for, I don't know, a month from now, two months from now. And then what I want to do is I will position this scissor jack so it'll pick up off some of these braces and then I can get at everything that I need to get at because everything I need to get at really is just above the rear axle. And then I wanna do some work on the inside of these, uh, these rocker lips. Um, so it shouldn't be that bad. So I guess I'll uh, carry on and get the, get the body mounts off. Okay, so there's two back here as well that I already got out. See the bolt, bolts are just sit, <coughs> sitting there, They're not fastened on the bottom at all. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna, I can't crank the back up because I'll run into the frame, but I'm gonna pick the weight in the front here first and just make sure everything looks cool uh, before I go and uh, start lowering that uh, uh, scissor lift because sometimes this old scissor lift, it's an old snap-on unit. I get asked about it a lot. I got it on a, in a deal with another car that I got one time and it's a long story. It's an ancient snap-on thing. I had to do some work on it, but it's great. Anyway, um, it's not exactly always ginger when you on that first initial lower. So uh, I just want to make sure that I've got all the weight before I go and lower it in case it does jerk a little bit coming down. It, it doesn't go and, and cause some sort of uh, mess. And I'll give this a crank here to uh, see if we got this. Oh, there goes the gantry lining itself. Okay, it is definitely floating. The floating, just doing a walk around. Uh, it, it is off. Wow. It's very rigid. Okay, so I think we're good because uh, when I picked it, uh, it's picked the body mounts all the way down the whole car um, just by taking that, those couple of pulls with the chain. So I think it's ready to go. 
I guess we'll find out. Hopefully it doesn't bend my car in half because that would be very sad. Um, just so you know, I will be over by the jack pump, by the scissor lift pump. So if it, something does go awry, I'm a long way away from it. It's not gonna fall and crush me. Uh, my wife is in the house. She knows what I'm doing. Um, I have my phone on me to call her in case I'm dead. And if I'm too dead to call, then it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess that's as safe as I can be when I'm by myself. So I will lower this, I'll start lowering it, I guess, and see what happens. I don't know, I'm sure it'll be fine. So once I start to lower it now, I will, uh, I'll do a walk around and just make sure nothing's catching, nothing's hanging up. I should have lots of height to get the frame to roll out from under it. So, locks are off. Let's see. Oh. Okay. That's it. It's coming. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Nothing's hanging up. Uh, car supported. Not gonna dare try and open the doors right now, that's for sure. All right, let's see. Okay. Oh yeah. Wow. Okay, it's clear. It's clear. This is awesome. <laughs> well then. Uh, I call that a success. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, this is uh, this is the first time I pulled a body off its own frame on a vehicle and planned to put its own frame back underneath it. <laughs> Usually it's like a frame swap. So uh, this is pretty cool. I gotta take some pictures. One thing's for sure, I am not getting underneath this. Um, the furthest I will get underneath it is to put the arms under it and uh, I will reach in. I don't really care to do, but I kind of don't have much choice. All right, so now that lift is gonna be kind of in the way. Okay, legs are in the way. Okay, so yeah, here's my chassis. Uh, you can see people were saying, well, you gotta put new body mounts in before you do uh, any building on the car. Well, there are, there are new body mounts in, they're everywhere. So you can see why I wanna you know, take, a 
take a minute and, and do some fixing and cleaning and whatever on this frame. Um, there's a lot of things that I see, nothing <coughs> crazy jumps out at me other than I hit it with a zip wheel right there and uh, I got to stitch that up. Um, it just needs a wire wheel and a paint and then obviously I need to do something with the front suspension. I need to do something with the rear suspension. I need to build a transmission cross member at some point. Um, so I think that's uh, good. This is the factory GM rear end. If anyone can tell me what uh, to code this thing for me, what does it say? I don't know, it says something, 3267306. If anyone can decode that for me, wouldn't that be wonderful if it was a posi? Probably not. Um, I'm thinking about just using the center section or replacing the center section with this with a posi unit and using the factory rear end. But ideally I would like like a 12 bolt, but I, I don't know, I haven't been able to find one yet. Time will tell. Yeah. Okay, now my car's still levitating, so I gotta get uh, the scissor lift lined up to where I want it to be, move the, start putting it up in the air, move the arms to where I want them to be, and uh, get this thing supported. That'd be good, wouldn't it? It's uh, been about 10 minutes, or it's been levitating. It's probably 10 minutes too many, so I'll get on that right now. Okay, so the only thing that I didn't really like about the whole thing is I've got it up on the ends of those feet and they're kind of straight on on the brace, so I don't really like that. So I'll probably, now that I have it low to the ground, I'll jack it up or I'll put some blocks or something and I'll just move that, reorient it. Um, but it's like, look at how it's, now it's infinitely adjustable. Well, not infinite, but it's fully adjustable. I can work on it. Uh, I can put it up, work underneath. Um, once I get that sort of straightened up and I just make sure everything's cool. Uh, and then I can also, because I haven't stripped the roof yet, as you can tell, there's some stuff on the roof. Um, so I can strip the roof and carry on with that. Uh, yeah, so, like I got way more access to stuff now. Um, you can see my trunk is latched, by the way, because I have a trunk latch. Uh, yeah. It's pretty cool. So now I can, you know, I, I can work at, at a proper height to, to do the remainder of the things that I need to do. I can get it up to uh, work underneath in that section that I haven't replaced. Like really the only part of the floor that's not new is from the back of that one piece pan to the last 10 inches that I replaced. So it's just that section. So that's the section I wanna get underneath and scrape all the crap off of it and get it ready for a proper coat of, uh, Paint, I also want to do the inside of the quarters with paint, seam seal all the inside with brushable seam seal on all the welds, and then I'll paint over it with that uh, DOM 16, uh, and then I can continue on. So I can do the body like this, really. I can do the majority of the body work. Doors, I still have to blow the doors off of it because uh, they need a lot of work. They're a project in themselves. So, and that's what happens when you get used doors. I am gonna have some extra doors available, extra two-door doors available. So that will be interesting. Um, speaking of doors, if I've done a half decent job, this door should open and close. 
but I just put a dent in it too. That's handy. Uh, well, the car is solid. So you can see I started with that metal filler over here, just playing around, trying to get it sort of straight. Um, seal up all those welds. Yeah, and now like I want to put some of that metal to metal filler in here and sand it all so I can do that now. So this is gonna, this is gonna help a lot. I actually still have to pull the glass because I'm an idiot and uh, when I did the glass, or when I did all the welding, I left the glass in so the glass is ruined. Um, so that's dumb, but uh, at least I can do that now um, at like a proper working height. It does consume my entire shop though. Uh, what I might do, it is the middle of winter, what I might do is I might put this outside sometime and just leave it out there for a little while until I'm ready to do something with it. I promised you that I bought some new stuff and that I would show you. So I haven't brought it in the shop yet. So maybe let's, let's uh, do that and uh, yeah, and then I'll show you what I bought. Let's set you up on the 57. So here we are. Put you on the 57. Okay. First things first, I got uh, window glass for the uh, vent windows. I got two sets, used vent window, window glass. This is cool, brand new uh, 210 trim for the, uh, these are the spears for the, uh, all the way down the quarter panel. Here's the uh, ends of the spears and uh, brand new paint dividers for two-tone. Speaking of paint dividers, here's the paint dividers for the uh, upper part of the quarter. Some used uh, grill ends. And this is uh, interesting. I was just mentioning that I screwed the glass in the car. This is new rear glass, not new, but new used rear glass in good condition, no weld spatter. But wait, there's more. This is uh, rear quarter glass for uh, a two door. This the gentleman gave me that I got all these parts from. This is uh, side glass for the two door doors. Um, it's a little rough, needs some cleanup, but there's no chips, no spalls, no scratches. Well, that I can tell. Um, just some overspray and crap on them, so uh, they might be serviceable. And the other rear quarter glass. Another thing I found the other day in my C can was uh, the trim that goes around the, uh, the driver's and passenger door, the two doors. And uh, we'll just take a walk over here and look at this stuff. So yeah, there's that back glass. It's actually, it looks to be in pretty good shape. It's just got some overspray and stuff on it. Um, here is the, uh, there's the quarter glass. There's the uh, side windows. They've got some tint I gotta take off. I can do that. The spears were new. I had to drive a long way to get these. I had to drive, well, I left work and drove two hours to get there and then drove uh, about three and a half, four hours to get back home. So, but it was worthwhile because the guy was very fair on the price and I got more stuff than I expected. Uh, the only thing I'm missing now is uh, to do all 210 trim on it, is the, uh, uh, the trim that goes across the top of the doors. Let's go look at that. So I think the plan is that I'm gonna do 210 trim and uh, I'm gonna do, well, obviously, because I already bought it. I'm gonna do 210 trim, and uh, I'm gonna put the Bel Air emblems on it, because this was a Bel Air. Um, are the gold emblems for 57s only, or were the gold emblems also on 55s? Because my, uh, my radio, or not radio, my clock up there on the dash uh, has a gold emblem. So I don't know, do I put gold emblems here? 
So I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to put the gold emblems here. Um, so what I'm missing for, I have to fill these holes now, or maybe not that one, but these ones for sure, because this is a Bel Air door, and that's Bel, you can see where the spear was for the Bel Air. I'm going to have to fill these holes as well, because I'm not going to put the front trim on. Uh, should I put the front trim on? I do have holes in my fenders for the front trim. And I have holes in this door. I don't have holes in that other door. I do have holes in this door if I use this door. Um, this door also needs a pile of work. Um, that is a Bel Air door. Uh, this, wow, this is weird seeing it this low. What is this door? This is, uh, looks like a 210 door. Uh, because it's got the holes for the spear. But then it's also got some holes that were filled. Maybe it's a 56 door. I don't know. I've got this door. I only have the one for the driver. No, I have two for the driver's side, but that's the good one. Uh, I've got uh, these two for the passenger side, and then I got another set that's outside that's uh, out in the sea can that's not, uh, not the greatest. So, see now when I want to align my doors and everything, I can do all that. Uh, um, not final align because it'll all change when the body's back on the chassis, but I can just sort of get them closer and the driver's door is good. It's just this one I still got to play with a little bit. Yeah, so the trim I need is this trim that goes along the bottom of the door and it'll go, and there's another piece that goes along here. So I need that trim. I'm not going to run the upper window trim. So that's that. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. Um, I appreciate it. So uh, it's good progress. Uh, I'm not sure what's next. Guess we'll have to see. Stick around and uh, check out my other videos of this project. And thanks for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one.